Now, the spacewalk is scheduled for day three. It's going to be risky. You've just heard. It's a new space suit. And the Dragon capsule doesn't have an airlock. So everybody inside will feel the vacuum of space. Leroy Chow was the commander of the International Space Station in 2004. This is, these are pictures of his many space walks. If you can see, he's with me now. Sir, honored to have you with us. Um, just, just, just tell me, what do you make of what they're doing up there? Well, it is a little bit eyebrow raising for a couple of reasons. Number one, as you've pointed out, uh, you know, these these are not professionals. They've been trained, to be fair. Uh, they've been accomplished other things, but, uh, you know, they're not professionals. They haven't done this before. It's a brand new spacesuit, never been tested actually in space. Number two, they are going to vent the cabin, the entire cabin down to vacuum. And of course, that's a pretty big risk because uh, you've got to repressurize it and make sure all the seals are going to hold and none of the uh, equipment's going to uh, fail because it's been exposed to vacuum. Uh, so there is some risk involved in this. Uh, no question about it. Here's the tougher question. Um, do you think it's a reasonable risk that they're running? I actually do. You know, after my eyebrows raised a little bit, I thought about it. And, you know, I know uh, several of the people over there at SpaceX, and I used to do some consulting work for them for a number of years. And I know that they take safety very seriously, and they know how bad it would be if there were to be some kind of an accident. And so I have confidence that they've, you know, thoroughly uh, done everything that they can to make sure that this thing happens uh, safely. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting. I, I have to say that uh, I am for commercial space. I am for uh, missions like this because it's kind of a natural progression. The government funds uh, these big programs, figures out the technology, figures out how to do it, and then the commercial side comes over and starts, you know, uh, building off of that. So all in all, I think this is a great thing, and, and I wish those guys great success. A couple of other areas. I cannot have an astronaut on the program without sort of other things. Um, the astronauts that are stuck on the space station because Boeing's craft can't get them back. And they're now, look, I understand they're mentally prepared. They're, I mean, it's, 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 it's grim for them, but it's six months, so they'll, they'll get over it. Uh, from Boeing's point of view, having this piece of junk attached to the ISS that, won't, that they can't get back, or at least they'll have to deadhead it back, I mean, it's embarrassing, it's difficult, it's, it's just downright weird. Well, no question. It's a huge black eye for Boeing, and they have not had a good few, several years, you know, in their airplane business and now in their space business. So, uh, you know, they've got a brand new CEO. He's been tasked to turn the culture around. Hopefully they will transition back to more of an engineering and technology led company mm -hmm. rather than, you know, an accountant right. kind of a bottom line led uh, organization, and they'll be able to recover the grandeur they used to have and the reputation they used to have. Very difficult to recover a reputation once sure. you've sullied it. Absolutely. All right, back to you, sir. Back to you. Just give me a, just tell me what it was like when you leave the capsule and or the, the ISS and you're floating in space. I know you're a thorough professional and you're concentrated on the job in hand and you're not worried. And no, but what was that moment like? Sure. Well, first of all, it is nothing like it's portrayed in the movies. You know, in the movies, you take just a few minutes to get this suit on. You walk into this huge airlock, which vents the vacuum in a matter of seconds. And then you float outside and you're listening to your heartbeat and your, your own breathing. None of that is true. Uh, it takes hours to get everything together and prepared and to get into your suit, uh, go through all the checks. It takes a while to go down to vacuum. The airlock's very small because you want to lose the smallest amount of gas mm -hmm. you can. You've got to make it up uh, or you've got to pump it you know, in and out. And then um, when you're outside it's or when you turn the suit on, it's very noisy. There's a loud fan blowing oxygen over your face, which is a good noise. But it's uh, you cannot hear your heart for anything. And you also, interestingly, in the American suit, the pressure inside is so low, you can't whistle. So you're not listening to your own breathing or anything like that. And uh, but the impression, I think, is what you're getting at. Once you go outside that view of space through the helmet visor, you get your peripheral vision involved and it's spectacular. And it's uh, uh, it's it's surreal. Can, That's the best. Word can I you can use. <laughs> reading the notes and reading your comments on this? 
can you get your head around the fact that a it's a vacuum and that if it, you know there's nothing there and if you throw something it'll go forever but also when you look out into the black yonder it goes on forever can you get your head around that you're right and that's that's uh, you know kind of like that word i i use is surreal it's almost like you're in a dream you can hardly believe you're out there you're looking as as you say at the beautiful earth and then you turn and you're looking doubt out into deep space into the the darkest black you can imagine when you're on the sun side of the orbit you know you can't see the stars on, on that part of the orbit and so uh yeah it's uh it makes you think about a lot of things and also you're very much aware of the risk you're at a very much higher risk level when you're out there and i i'm in a state of all six of my spacewalks i was in a state of what i call hyper awareness i was very aware of where my tethers were making sure i was always attached to the station uh, you know, just knowing where all my equipment was and I wasn't going to get things tangled up in my legs or anything like that. Uh, you, there are a lot of things to keep track of when you're outside. I, I, we've got a couple more minutes just to, 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 to talk about this a bit more. Uh, back to SpaceX and, and the Dragon, I sort of, I thoroughly admire what they're doing and I applaud. And, you know, their, their record is tremendous and this is the future, as you say. But we we have to bear in remember that there's risk real risk i don't just mean theoretical risk there is as we just as richard branson discovered with his craft as the titanic lot discovered when they went down there there is real risk to exploration and that can't be totally negated yeah you're absolutely right uh you know there there is risk in getting on a rocket filled with fuel and you've got uh, uh pumps you know turbo pumps that have to work and and the rocket engines have to work and, you know, the everything has to stay together, right? Even on a vehicle yep. that's flown many times, you know, it just takes one one uh, careless, uh, you know, something sure. didn't get checked right, you know, could be, could be all over. So, yeah, there's definitely risk and you have to be fully aware of that uh, before right. you agree to go on something but like Leroy, this. But Leroy, I'll bet, I'll bet a cup of coffee that if I was to pay for your ride up there next time round, you'd go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> I, I would love an opportunity to go to the moon. Uh, you, uh, you know, it's interesting. Astronauts, we think right. about risk more with every flight we take. Yeah. And you're wondering, you're asking yourself, what am I doing differently this time? Or what new experience am I going to have that's going to make the risk, the reward worth right. the risk? Right. So anyway, I would love to go to the moon if you'd like to pay for me to, to go. <laughs> uh, what's that famous line? Che checks in the mail. Grateful for your attention, yeah. sir. Thank <laughs> right. you very much indeed.